Welcome to the Correlation and Principal Component Analysis tutorial. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to use Analyze It to visualize the relationships between the variables and the similarities between observations. Understanding the relationship between variables. When analyzing many variables, scatter plots and correlation coefficients can quickly uncover patterns and reduce a large amount of data to a subset of interesting relationships. Correlation describes the strength of a relationship between two variables. A correlation coefficient ranges from minus 1 to plus 1. Plus 1 indicates a perfect positive linear relationship and minus 1 indicates a perfect negative linear relationship. 0 indicates the variables are uncorrelated and there is no linear relationship. Normally, the correlation coefficient lies somewhere between these values. To illustrate the concepts, we're going to use data from a New York magazine article that examines the most livable neighbourhoods in New York. In the original article, written by Nate Silver, neighbourhoods were scored using 12 factors. Then the scores for each factor were combined into an overall score and ranking for each neighbourhood. To create the scatter plot and correlation matrix, this is what you need to do. So first of all, we open the file New York neighborhoods.xlsx and we click a cell in the data set. On the Analyze It ribbon tab in the Statistical Analysis group, click Correlation and then click Correlation Matrix and the Analysis Task pane is displayed to the right of the data set. In the Model drop-down list, select Multivariate and in the Y variables list box, we're going to select affordability, transit, shopping and services, crime, food, schools, diversity, creative, housing quality, green space, wellness and nightlife. So select correlation and color maps. And on the Analyze It ribbon tab in the correlation group, click scatter matrix and then click Scatter Plot Matrix with Density Ellipses and Histograms. In the Density Ellipse edit box, enter 75%. Okay, and so after all of that, we can just click Calculate, and the results are calculated, and the analysis report is displayed. The Scatter Plot Matrix shows plots for all of the pairs of variables, and each plot shows the relationship between a pair of variables. The red ellipse contains the middle 75% of the neighbourhoods and indicates whether the two variables are positively, negatively or not correlated. The correlation matrix shows the correlation coefficient for each pair of variables. Positively correlated variables are blue and negatively correlated variables are red with the intensity dependent on the magnitude of the correlation. So let's take a look, because based on the scatter plot matrix and the correlation matrix, a few relationships are obvious. Neighbourhoods with affordable housing don't offer good transit. Better shopping also means a greater number of restaurants. There is less creative capital in neighbourhoods with high diversity and wellness seems almost completely unrelated to other factors. Reducing the dimensionality of the data. So due to the large number of variables in the data set, it's hard to comprehend all of the relationships between the variables using a scatter plot or correlation matrix. Using a data reduction technique such as principal components analysis, PCA, reduces the dimensionality of the data set whilst retaining as much of the variability in the data as possible. The first few principal components retain most of the variation in the original variables and to make interpretation simpler, they can be used to describe the relationships between the original variables and similarities between observations. PCA is a mathematical technique that reduces dimensionality by creating a new set of variables called principal components. The first principal component is a linear combination of the original variables and explains as much variation as possible in the original data. 
Each subsequent component explains as much of the remaining variation as possible under the condition that it is uncorrelated with the previous components. So let's take a look at what we need to do to compute the principal components. First of all, on the Analyze It ribbon tab, in the PCA group, click Principal Components. The Principal Components task is added to the Analysis Task pane. Next, select Transform Scale. The data will be standardised so that each variable has a variance of 1. Next, select Variances, Coefficients and Colour Maps. And that's it, apart from clicking Recalculate. So let's click that and the results are calculated and the analysis report is displayed. The variances table shows the amount of variance in the original data explained by each principal component. Because the data was standardised, a principal component with a variance of 1 indicates that the component accounts for variation equivalent to one of the original variables. Also, the sum of all the variances equals the number of original variables. There are many ad hoc rules regarding the number of components to retain to adequately describe the data. According to the table, the first two principal components account for nearly 70% of the variance in the original 12 variables, whilst the first three components account for nearly 80%. The coefficients table shows the linear combinations that make each principal component and the colour map shows the structure of the components. Absolute values near zero indicate that a variable contributes little to the component, whereas larger absolute values indicate variables that contribute more to the component. The sign of the coefficients is irrelevant and may even differ when the analysis is performed on different computers. Now, there's not necessarily a simple interpretable structure to the principal components because they're created to maximise the amount of variance whilst remaining uncorrelated with the other components. By trying to interpret the coefficients in the table, we can see that the first component is an average of many different variables. The second component represents mainly crime, wellness and, to a lesser extent, schools and housing quality. And the third component, although it still has some reasonable sized contribution from other variables, represents mainly green space. Understanding the relationship between variables revisited. Well, rather than using a scatter plot or correlation matrix, a two dimensional correlation monoplot of the coefficients of the first two principal components can visualise the relationships between the variables. The correlation monoplot shows vectors pointing away from the origin to represent the original variables. The angle between the vectors is an approximation of the correlation between the variables. A small angle indicates the variables are positively correlated. An angle of 90 degrees indicates the variables are not correlated. And an angle close to 180 degrees indicates the variables are negatively correlated. The length of the line and its closeness to the circle indicate how well the variable is represented in the plot. It's therefore unwise to make inferences about relationships involving variables that are poorly represented. To create a correlation monoplot, we click on the Analyze It ribbon tab and in the PCA group click Monoplot. And then we choose Correlation Monoplot. The monoplot task, you see, is added to the analysis task pane. Simply click recalculate and the results are calculated and the analysis report is displayed. Although the first two principal components only account for 70% of the variance in the original data set, they still provide a useful approximation of the relationships between the variables. The relationships between the variables described earlier using the scatter plots are easier to visualise in the monoplot. The negative correlation between affordability and transit is represented by the lines being almost 180 degrees to each other. Green space is not very well represented as indicated by the short length of its vector. 
This variable was mostly associated with the third principal component, which is not represented in the two-dimensional plot. Understanding the similarities between observations. Until now, we've been interested in understanding the relationships between the variables, but often the interest is on the similarity between neighbourhoods or groups of neighbourhoods. Whilst it's possible to label and colour the points on the scatter plots relating to neighbourhoods, it is not easy to interpret them when each neighbourhood is represented on 60 or more plots. It's easier to first reduce the dimensionality of the data using principal components and then use a by-plot that simultaneously plots information on the observations and the variables. The classical by-plot popularised by Gabriel represents the variables using vectors and observations as points, whereas a more recent innovation developed by Gower and Hand represents the variables using calibrated axes and observations as points, allowing the observations to be projected onto the axes and an approximation made. A full monograph titled Understanding Bioplants by Gower, Gardner Lube and LaRue is an excellent book on the subject. So let's create a biplot. First of all, we open the file newyorkneighborhoods.xlsx and we click a cell in the data set. On the Analyze It ribbon tab in the Statistical Analyses group, click Correlation, click Biplot, and then click PCA Biplot. The Analysis task pane is displayed to the right of the handset there. In the Model drop down list, we want to select multivariate and in the Y variables list box we'll select affordability, transit, let's go for shopping and services, crime, food, schools, diversity, creative, housing quality, green space, wellness and nightlife. So next select label points and then click calculate. The results are calculated and the analysis report is displayed. The biplot shows the two-dimensional approximation to the original multi-dimensional space. It represents 70% of the original variation in the data. Each point on the biplot represents a neighbourhood and each axis represents a variable. The distance between points represents the similarity between them. Points close to each other are neighbourhoods with similar profiles and points far away have dissimilar profiles. Any point on the plot can be projected orthogonally onto the axes to show the approximate value of that variable. For example, Bedford Park, centre right of the plot there. So that scores around 90 on affordability, 65 on housing quality and 70 on food. The true values were 89, 60 and 62 respectively. So the approximation is fairly accurate for these variables and this neighbourhood. So rather than focusing on individual neighbourhoods, we may group the neighbourhoods by the borough they're located in and plot the points using different symbols and colours. To change the point colours and symbols, on the by plot task pane, click Vary Point Colour Symbol and in the Group Colour Symbol drop-down list, select Borough. Click Recalculate and the results are calculated and the analysis report is displayed. It's easy to see that the neighbourhoods in the Bronx are more affordable than those in Manhattan and that they have lower scores for shopping and services, transit, food and creative. Note that the axes are labelled on the edge with higher values for convenience. Sometimes there are going to be additional variables that were not included in the PCA because they are a combination of the other variables. It can still be useful to add these variables to the plot as additional axes to help interpretation. So to add an additional variable, first of all on the by plot task pane click add new variables and in the additional variables list select rank. Click recalculate, the results are calculated and the analysis report is displayed. The plot shows the additional axis named rank, coloured green in the plot. Due to its poor representation, only 25% of variation in the original variable is explained by the first two principal components, so we won't pursue interpreting it any further. 
It's not surprising, though, given it is a weighted average of the other scores that have varying degrees of correlation between them. If we have our own priorities regarding what constitutes our ideal neighbourhood, this can be plotted to determine a list of neighbourhoods closely matching those criteria. To add an additional observation, on the Biplot task pane, click Add New Observations. In the Label edit box, enter My Ideal. Next, in the edit boxes, enter Affordability equals 70, Transit equals 75, Shopping and Services equals 75, Crime equals 80, Food equals 80, Schools equals 80, Diversity 75, Creative 80, Housing Quality equals 80, Green Space equals 85, Wellness equals 80, Nightlife equals 85. So click Recalculate and the results are calculated and the analysis report displayed. So our ideal neighbourhood is interpolated onto the plot and labelled My Ideal, left and above the centre of the plot. Now, neighbourhoods that closely match those priorities will surround that point. Namely, these neighbourhoods are Park Slope, Upper West Side and the Flatteron District and Gramercy. Once the plot's constructed, there are many additional options that can be used to tweak its appearance. The quality of the representation of the axis, known as the predictivity and shown in brackets at the end of each axis label, indicates how much of the variance in the original variable is explained in the plot. Some of the variables, such as green space, schools and diversity, are poorly represented in a two-dimensional PCA biplot, which means projections of points onto those axes aren't very accurate. Likewise, some neighbourhoods may not be well represented by the two-dimensional approximation. Another issue is that the axes cross over the data points, which makes them difficult to see. To change the plot options, in the Rotate edit box, enter minus and the plot will be rotated so the axis that is best represented will be horizontal. Select Transparency. The points that are poorly approximated will be made more transparent. Next, select Visibility, and in the Predictivity Threshold edit box, enter 0.6, and the axes which are poorly represented will be hidden. Select Adjust Axes, and in the Offset X edit boxes enter crime equals 4, wellness equals minus 4.5, nightlife equals 4.1. And in the offset Y edit boxes we'll enter transit equals 4, shopping and services equals 4, food equals minus 3.3, creative equals minus 3.6, housing quality equals minus 4.3, and rank equals minus 4. Next, Click Recalculate and the results are calculated and the analysis report is displayed. The plot is rotated so that the axis which is best represented, here affordability, is horizontal. Other axes are offset to the edge of the plot which makes the points easier to see. Points are filled with a lighter transparency, the poorer the representation. Axes that represent less than 60% of the variation in the variable are hidden, which eliminates the risk of interpreting the projections onto them. So, thanks for watching this tutorial. If you want to find out more and download a free trial of Analyze It, visit us at analyze-it.com.